We're at the Exhibition of an Art Center in Chicago, Illinois. And we're here for Disney 100, the exhibition. We're gonna see a lot of Disney memorabilia curated from the Disney archives. We're excited. This is the first thing you see when you come in. And over here to the right as you walk in is the box office. You can buy tickets on site if they're available. You can also get some snacks. And we got tickets in advance. Our scheduled time was 10.30. And right before you go in, there's a big statue of Goofy. Yes, Donna loves Goofy. <laughs> We're gonna go over here and go in, show them our tickets and then go into the exhibition. And this is the first room when you walk in. We're waiting on the next show to start. On the wall, it shows how some of the characters were drawn. Like Mickey. Can't have shoulders when needed. Pants have pockets. There is more than 250 artifacts in this exhibition. And it's going to be traveling the world. So Chicago is just one of its stops. Here at the archives is our mission to protect, preserve, and make available the history of the Walt Disney Company. So in celebration of 100 years of Disney magic and entertainment, it is my honor to welcome you to Disney Money for the exhibition. This very special exhibition will travel the world for five years in two units, one in North America and one in international locations. Both units feature hundreds of iconic Disney artifacts from throughout its history, including props, costumes, models, attraction vehicles, and artwork, as well as our original immersive activities that are sure to please visitors of all ages. We hope you'll enjoy your visit today and look forward with us to the next 100 years of Disney Magic. Secret about our approach. 
we keep moving forward, opening up new doors, doing new things, because we're curious. And curiosity keeps leading us down new paths. We're always exploring and experimenting. preceded the creation of Mickey Mouse. So Oswald. Oswald the Lucky Rabbit stencil set. This tells about when Walt lost the rights to Oswald the Lucky Rabbit. Talks about the invention of Mickey Mouse and Minnie. After Mickey came along, then Walt created Minnie Mouse, Pluto, Goofy, Donald Duck, Daisy Duck, Silly Symphony Series. responsible for a lot of innovations in animation. Disney famously invented the multiplane camera, which brought depth and dimensionality to animation cinematography. So you can actually hear some of the cartoons, which is cool. Yeah. Oh, that must be a lively one. Donna's dancing with the skeletons. <laughs> <laughs> dancing with this. Yeah. Walt's legacy. Walt passed away on December 15th, 1966. The things he set in motion paved the way for many great things that the Disney company has produced. And this wall is a timeline of the Walt Disney Corporation. The start of the company in the 1920s, 1923. This is the 30s. And the 40s, New Disney Studio. In the 50s, WD Enterprises established. In the 60s, Absent Minded Professor. In the 70s, Head Knobs and Broomsticks. In the 80s, brought us the Disney Channel. In the 90s, Aladdin. 2000, D23. 2010s, Frozen, Wreck It Ralph. 2020s Jungle Cruise and of course much more where did the stories come from it's talking about the fables and fairy tales delivering moral lessons first story is about Snow White and the Seven Dwarfs it's no more a cartoon than a painting by Whistler is a cartoon oh, it shows some of the drawings there's Snow White's cottage Snow White and one of the seven dwarfs. Oh, it's all the, maybe one, two, three, five of the seven dwarfs. Aw. There's Pinocchio, the wooden puppet. In a far away land long ago lived a king and a fair queen. Many years they had longed for a child. Finally their wish was granted. When I turned the book, it went up on the screen. 
daughter was born and they called her Aurora. Aurora, sweet Aurora. Yes, they named her after Dawn. The Dawn, she filled their lives with sunshine. So happily ever after. Oh, look at the birds. Look at that. The birds are in the page. But then up here, the birds are actually flying. That's the magic of Disney. Cinderella, 1950. Oh wow, look at all those little drawings. And these are like the original drawings by a name, a guy by the name of Cy Young from 1950. So that's over 73 years old. And there's Cinderella, the artist was Mary Blair. We have the fairy godmother. And we have the glass slipper. Wow, look at that. If I can zoom in for you. There's a butterfly on the very toe of it. There's the heel. This thing is like in the middle of the room. What does it do? Oh, wow. The sources of inspiration, it says. Like uh, fairy tales and fables were a source for Disney movies and stories like Snow White. That was an old story. Aww, there's Lady in the Tramp. Where did it go? Mythology. No Hercules. There's some books there that were inspirations. Grimm's Fairy Tales. It's the house at Pooh Corner. A big Hero 6 comic. And this is a snow globe from 1964. Mary Poppins. There's one of the carousel horses that they rode in Mary Poppins. Winnie the Pooh, a Disney favorite. This is a Winnie the Pooh live action reference stand-in from the Christopher Robin movie in 2018. And there's Sleepy. And a sleepy little bunny too. The exhibit gives you a lot of good backstory on different Disney movies like The Princess and the Frog. You might see some questions along the way too. What kind of enchanted object is Cogsworth from Beauty and the Beast? He's a clock. And here are some production models from Beauty and the Beast. This is Lemire and Cogsworth. These are amazing. And this is from the 2017 movie. This is so cool. And this is a sketch drawing of the Beast. This room is about the illusion of life. see how tall Donna is in comparison to the Incredibles. Uh, about the same height there. There you go. You're part of the family. The film's designers carefully develop a specific color palette for the characters and their costumes. You can flip these over and see which characters these colors represent. Like this one, Dumbo, Cinderella, Alice, Tigger, and Robin Hood. And this table here is pretty cool. You can turn this to a character, push the button, and it tells you about that character. You push the button, it tells you more about Moana. Turn the dial to get to the next one. It's really cool. Several characters on here that you can look at. They have a lot of great interactive exhibits here. Makes it a lot of fun. The animator's model shop. These are where initial models are made to show what the character would look like. And then the animators can use these models to base their art on. They call these maquettes. This is from The Wonderful World of Disney Presents The Little Mermaid Live. And this is an Olaf toy puppet from Frozen, the Broadway musical. And these are some artists doing voice work. Allowed me to just explore and find these non sequiturs that made the character spark. Oh, I just play it, giant sets above in an open fire. That's insane. This is a dress from the 2021 movie Cruella. What are you listening to, Donna? How they made, how the guy who did Olaf's voice. 
and like now how they are putting a musical on the cruise ship, the Disney Wonder, to do this musical of, I guess, Frozen. This room is the spirit of adventure and discovery. I see Star Wars and Spider-Man and Moana, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This is the costume of Captain Hector Barbosa. There's the darling kids and Peter Pan flying around the sky. Donna's gonna fly with them. <laughs> she can fly, she can fly. You have to line up three of the same symbol with this triangle. And then we're gonna see what happens over here. Okay. So I need those two dashes and a dot. No. Oh. Did it. Lit up, cool. National Treasure Book of Secrets and an inscribed wooden plank. So Donna solved the puzzle. And this model is amazing. It's huge. It's from 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea. This is the Nautilus. This is Captain Nemo's ship. It's amazing. That almost looks like a spaceship. Takes us to the next section where they do have spaceships, Star Wars. Han Solo's dice. That's from Star Wars The Last Jedi movie in 2017. This is a pork puppet from Star Wars The Last Jedi in 2017. And here's BB-8. And BB-8 appeared in The Force Awakens, The Last Jedi, and The Rise of Skywalker. There's a First Order Stormtrooper, and then it's Marvel. There's the Black Panther. Here's some really cool superhero helmets. There's Thor. This is Ajax helmet from the Eternals. Star-Lord helmet. Iron Man mask. Wasp helmet. And Loki's helmet. These are really cool to see in person. And this is from Mars and Beyond. Something that was on TV in 1957. So cool. And Walt himself was very interested in space and space exploration. Captain America's shield from the Civil War movie from 2016. And then this is the outfit that Captain Marvel from 2019 wore in the movie. Now we're going into the magic of sound and music. The first animated musical was Snow White and the Seven Doors from 1937. Oh wow, this is the original score. Whistle while you work. There's like an original record from 1938. It talks about all the music. Like Bigger Than Us is a song that was in Seoul in 2020. Maestro Mickey. And this section back here shows some of the songs, how they were recorded, who recorded them, what countries they were from, recorded in different languages. This one you can actually pick the language you want to hear the song in. On here and listen to what's on that screen in different languages. And this is a guitar from the Mickey Mouse Club, which ran from 1955 to 1959. It's a mouse guitar for the Mouseketeers. This is Mufasa from the Lion King musical on Broadway. In this room, they look at sound effects and how they're produced. These sticks make the sound of fire crackling. This is just bamboo, and we use it for fire. It comes off very well for fire. We're just going to keep twisting it. There's a whistle from Steamboat Willie. One, two, three, four. This talks about music on stage. In 1994, Beauty and the Beast became Disney's first Broadway adaptation. There's some of their others. Disney has brought us lots of music over the years. 
there's just a little bit of that. You can listen to songs here, put the headphones on and make your selection. This is sheet music for Yoho, A Pirate's Life for Me. This is album art for the Haunted Mansion. Of course, it's a small world. You probably won't be able to get it out of your head once you hear that music. And this room is the world around us. Through imagery, both real and imagined, Disney explores the wonder of a myriad of cultures and customs, reminding everyone that we are all one and encouraging us to protect and preserve our planet not only for ourselves, but for generations to come. Disney has always been great about making nature shows, true life adventures, and features, and films, and making us laugh through animals. I remember watching those growing up. This is an Academy Award of Merit statuette for Disney's 1953 Bear Country. And of course, in Disney animation, there are a lot of animals, a lot of wildlife, a lot of nature. Bambi. set drawings, the fox and the hound. Walt spent quite a bit of time in South America too. These are gaucho pants that were given to Walt during his tour of South America. His 16 millimeter camera and a scrapbook. And Disney made a record of this trip and they used it for inspiration and ideas for future projects. So this part is the nature and park design. It talks about when Walt imagined Disneyland, he envisioned a place where guests would physically step into stories. Everything needed to feel real, whether in a land of fantasy, long ago frontier, or somewhere in the future. The sights and sounds, the smells, the very texture of the ground you walk on contribute to this reality. A Walt Disney World Resort, the Imagineers have created a truly transformative theme park. So all of the stories manage some way of talking about our human relationship to animals and to the world of nature in which they live. Innoventions. The art of storyboarding. That's cool. And I think for their movies today, they still do this. Shows here how they use some of the animatronics. The Carousel of Progress. Can you make the hand move? There's some dials. Oh yeah, the little fingers moving. And it moved back. And the pinky goes up. Oh wow, look at that. The Hall of President's electric head. Cool and creepy at the same time. It's a legendary drawing of Disneyland. From 1953. Holiday Land. It's funny to see like what he envisioned. So different than what Disneyland is today. But still, he was wanting to have rides where the kids could ride with the parents. They could all enjoy the rides together. This talks about Pixar. George Lucas hired Ed Catmull to start Lucas Films. This is like the history of Pixar. What's it gonna do? Does it do something? Does it do something? Oh, he's like saying what I say? Yeah. Wow. Wow, I don't think it's gonna do it. Just the head. That's weird. That's weird. Wow! I tried to make him laugh. <laughs> so this is what they call your Disney World, and this talks about the park. So there's a ride. Wow. So normally you cannot see these. Oh, it's the Matterhorn bobsled. You can normally cannot see this unless you go to the Disney park. So that's so cool. They have one of them in here. There's a teacup. Dumbo, Santa Fe, Main Street. Disneyland. So this is Disneyland at night. Oh, and this is the same thing that they had in the other room, but it's about all the different parks. There's Tokyo. So they've got all the parks all over the world on here. Shanghai, oh, Hong Kong, yeah. Paris, Tokyo, Florida, California. Wow. This is, it's a small world figure. 
Aww. There's the Peter Pan ride over there too, look. We're gonna sit here in the teacup. <laughs> This is something Walt Disney absolutely did. It is my wish to delight all members of the family, young and old, parent and child, in the kind of entertainment my associates and I turn out. Good job, Walt. Started in the 1920s. This is through the 40s. It's all started by a mouse. Of course, with a little help from Walt. These are some of the cartoons and features produced during that time. And here's the family from Encanto. Bruno, of course. Mirabelle. This is the 50s and 60s. and the River Pirates. There's his coonskin hat. Zorro. Haley Mills. Walt on the cover of TV Guide. These are the 60s and the 70s. <laughs> oh, I bet he almost got elected. The small world. First day cover stamp with Walt on it. These are the 80s and 90s. And this is the book from Hocus Pocus. And this is from the show Home Improvement. And here's the 2000s to 2020s. The video games. Kingdom Hearts. The Dharma Initiative Grape Drink Mix. Oh boy, from the TV show Lost. Cool room showing a timeline of Disney and Walt. We are just getting started. And I think this is the final room. <laughs> say a word of thanks to everybody that helped make this dream come true. Walt Disney. And the exhibit ends in a gift shop. As it should. And each room had a poster as you went in. And you can even buy those posters. Some very cool ones. Donna's going to do some tracing. She went to get the tracing paper that they have here. She has Ariel. That's fun, and it's right as you exit the gift shop. Yeah, that's Ariel. Looks good. And that's the end of the exhibit. It was great. And of course, see you real soon. So what'd you think of the exhibit, Donna? I really liked it. I was really impressed. There was so much to it. Yeah. So how long did we spend in there? I think two hours 
in 10 minutes. And they said it was a good hour and a half, depending on how much you read. Yeah, how much you interacted with some of the exhibits. But yeah, it was a good exhibit. You could stay as long as you wanted to. We could have stayed longer, but we have other things to do today, but it was great. How many rooms do you think there was total? I think there was 10 different rooms. Oh, wow. Yeah. I didn't realize it was 10. Yeah, 10 different rooms with lots of things in each room. Um, each one com completely different, you know, distinct and I, stuff. And I forget how much were our tickets to get in. I had a senior rate that was like $28 and yours was maybe $31. Oh, that's still not yeah. bad. Still good. Worth yeah. the money. If you're a Disney fan, you're going to love it. There were some people in there that uh, belonged to D23. Yeah. Because I seen her shirt that she had on. Yeah. So, and a girl that said she's going in February. So, definitely a lot of fans are going to yeah. go through it. Yeah. But come and see it if you can. It's going to be here for a while in Chicago. Today is November 30th. It's going to be here several months. So, come and see it if you can. Yeah, thanks for watching and stay tuned for more adventures. Bye. Bye.